Coming up next is Progeny Coffee. Meet Maria Palacio, the fifth generation Colombian coffee owner who's on a mission to lift Colombian coffee farmers out of poverty through her startup, Progeny Coffee. Welcome, Maria. Well, thank you so much for this invitation. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and yeah, I want to welcome you all to Progeny Coffee. Next slide, please. So as Frigia mentioned, my name is Maria Palacio. I am the co-founder and CEO of Progeny Coffee. I'm a fifth generation Colombian coffee farmer and my whole family has been in the coffee industry from my mom's side, dad's side, and that's where I grew up. So that allowed me to, um, to actually experience firsthand all the struggles that a coffee farmer goes through, facing not only facing the farmers produce about 15% below margin and all the way to seeing my dad lo lost his farm. And so as I was growing up in Colombia, it was really uh, present that there was no opportunities for me and our community to stay in agriculture. So I headed over here to the US looking for a bigger dream and, and something different. And here's where I met my co-founder, John Travelsi. And we got very present that we were consuming $5 a cup of coffee. And when we will travel back to Colombia, that was not the reality for our community and our family. So that's where we ask our question. Um, next slide, please. And so as we were going farther about this cup of coffee, we realized that it took five minutes for the uh, barista to brew that coffee. It takes only 12 minutes for the roaster to roast that coffee. And it took nine months of harvest to the farmer and three years to grow that, co that uh, coffee plant. So how come the farmers are not the face of their own coffee? Next slide, please. And so during 2016, we decided to found Progeny Coffee here in California with the mission to lift Colombian coffee farmers out of poverty. We decided and we asked ourselves, how can we create a company that is highly impactful, bring back value to the farmers and yet high scalable and delivers high quality um, to the consumers? Next slide. And so we started analyzing the supply chain and because we are from the source, we don't need all those middlemen. So we realized in the coffee chain, there are about 10 different uh, middlemen from the moment it leaves the farm to the moment it, it arrives here. Next slide, please. And so we decided, we realized that it was really important and critical to start even before at the farm level and bring free education, technical support in order to minimum double the income of the farmers. And we're really proud to say that today, minimum we're doubling the income of the farmer, lifting them out of poverty. And went even farther on really transforming the farms of these farmers um, into sustainable farming by, a, um, by our team in Colombia creating innovative local solutions for the farmers to really push their quality further. We had just our recent um, innovation, we were able to reduce about 90% of water consumption. And also um, we have the program of uh, reforestation, um, bringing back the ecosystem, and we have so much more that I'm happy to speak later on. Um, next, please. And we even took it further that eliminating most unnecessary middlemen, we were able to go down to three different steps, allowing us to capture all that excess revenue and distribute it throughout, this, throughout the farmer and the company, allowing us to have high profitability and yet leave farmers out of poverty and created them a healthy margin. Next slide, please. So we have, so this is Progeny Coffee. We have three different products. Here, what you can see is our whole bean. And as I mentioned, we believe that the farmers should always be the face of their own coffee. So you will always find the picture of the farmer in front of the packaging. We never do blends and we never mix the coffee. We always focus on specialty coffee um, and there's a high traceability. Next slide, please. And we also launched our single serve, which competes with Curate um, with our aim to reduce waste. And the packaging is fully compostable as well as our whole bean are fully compostable. So we're always thinking from sustainability from the farm level, seed level, all the way to discarding your packaging here. Next slide. 
And we also launch our beverage made out of the fruit of the coffee, which usually the fruit of the coffee is waste for the farmers. And these allow us to create an exter external revenue stream for the farmers using what was waste and launching a highly antioxidant beverage. The coffee fruit has five times more antioxidants than green tea. And our beverage has only five calories, one ingredient. So it's good for the planet and it's really good for you. In 2020, we won the Stacy Rice Project Award by PepsiCo, where we were able to really work along with the PepsiCo team to really push our mission forward with the beverage. Next slide, please. So as we were thinking of impact, because we're a highly impact-driven company, um, in order to push impact, we need to move volume. So being founded here in Silicon Valley, uh, we decided to go with the tech company. So we partnered with the companies like Google, um, where they got to adopt the farmer. So no longer they will choose a blend, they will actually choose a farmer. So for example, here's the story of William from Pitalito, uh, where Google adopted. And we even brought William here to California. And then you could see here the picture that he sent us back with his souvenir of the picture of his son. It was, um, it was really emotive. <laughs> That was a truly wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank um, you, Maria. Um, well, sorry to cut in, but yeah. let's hear what the investors, uh, Kristen, would you, would, you, would you like to get started? Yeah, I really do want to get started. In fact, I want to open this up right now. It smells so good. So for those of you, if you can't smell through the screen, it is just, I'm, I've been dying to open this. So, um, and so fun to meet the entrepreneur um, and the mastermind behind really bringing the face. You know, at NIA, we're trying to change the face of finance. And as we do that, really recognizing that we need to see the faces of who's actually doing, you know, all of the production, the behind the scenes on the finance side, as well as, of course, in Colombia. And um, just wondering, is it, will, um, I guess I've got so many questions, but mostly excitement. Um, you know, this is a tricky space. You know, we all kind of have our brands that we like. So just wanting to know, um, as awesome as the idea is, what is the marketing and adoption look like? And then also, is this mainly Colombia or will there be other um, origin countries as well? Oh, thank you so much for your excitement. Um, yeah, so to start with um, your first question about adoption, so the next slide I was going to go it was our sales channel. So we had a great adoption on the B2B level. So we were able to partner with a lot of the tech companies here in Silicon Valley, like Facebook, Google, and so on, where we we're redesigning and distributing their coffee, you know, for their offices, again, where they got to adopt the farmer. Uh, and we also launched our D2C model where we had a subscription model where they get people don't choose a blend, but actually adopt the farmer as well. Um, and so on the adoption, we realize that people, because you see the farmer, there's that connection, right? People now want to go even farther, not just good sourcing, because those sources should be obvious, right? How about we go above and beyond for the farmer? And so I, we have seen that people really understand that from our product and on our brand. Um, so that's a little bit about your first question. Sorry, can you repeat the second question? Oh yeah, just I think what I heard, and, and pardon me if you said this and I missed it, I'm seeing that it's Colombian coffee. Will it always be Colombian coffee or are you, it, would you be working with farmers in other places? Yeah, so right now we're focused on Colombia because that's where I'm from. And we believe that we first need to start creating a high impact in a region, right? If we start choosing a farmer here, a farmer there and farmer there, then we won't create a, a, a change in a community. So we're going after really making a change, lifting a community up. And so we do want to scale, we, do, we are looking to scale. And as we start saturating the market in Colombia, we will look to expand into other countries. So right now we are uh, raising $2 million, which that will impact about 1,540 farmers. Um, and so we will expand and our model is fully replicable. And so we're looking on our model um, in Colombia to be able to replicate in other countries farther in the future. Okay. I really it. I'm really excited about all you're doing it. And my neighboring um, country in Venezuela really needs you. So um, yeah. you know, let's get Colombia done. And then let's see what we can share with, uh, with uh, your neighbors. Exactly. Thank you so much, Maria and Kristen. Um, we would love to hear more in the breakout session.